She had not even received her Bachelor of Fine Arts when she was offered a starring role in the Broadway smash hit musical, The Light from the Piazza. Before that, she was simply a Texas girl performing in high school and college theater with big dreams and even bigger talent. Hello, I'm Ernie Manus. Coming up on Interviews, our conversation with Broadway star Katie Clark. Broadway stage still hold the same fascination for you? Oh, yeah. Every night. Really? Every show. You don't yeah. get to the point where you say, well, I made it. I'm here. Um, no. <laughs> no. It's still exciting, and it's still, it's still scary and nerve-wracking and um, all those things that go in with it, just like the first night. Does Broadway still mean the same thing in the acting world as it has for years, or has it kind of lessened in years? What do you think? Hmm. I guess it's, I want to say it's the same. Okay. Yeah. You, you can say that if I you do. want. I <laughs> do. <laughs> Explain how you got to Broadway. Okay. Um, I got to Broadway. Um, well, I was in high school. I took voice lessons from a woman named Lainey Carlin. And um, she always just really believed in me and um, introduced me to a woman that she went to college with who is now a big, she's worked on several Broadway musicals as a musical director and conductor. Um, Her name is Kim Grigsby. So two years ago, I actually met Kim through Lainey, and I sang for her, and um, we just kind of, hung out one night um, and she was working on Carolina Change at the time. She took me to watch one of the shows or the second act of the show and um, we went to dinner and just really hit it off. I left my headshot and resume with her and didn't hope for anything and then two years later I got a call from Janet Foster who is the casting director of Piazza and she said that they were trying to replace Kelly O'Hara and were having a little bit of difficulty, so she got my name from Kim Grigsby. So the next week I was on a plane with my mom, and um, I auditioned, and I got a call back, and then so I had, we had to actually extend our stay and change our flight reservations and get another <laughs> hotel room, and, and we stayed, and I, um, and I ended up getting the job that, and by the end of that week. And your experience up to that point in professional theater was what? Uh, I had done one professional show here in Houston, and it was Anything Goes at that, Tuts. And that was it, and now you're starring on Broadway. And now I'm okay. <laughs> So when young theater people come up to you, kids come up and say, oh, my God, what do you have to do to get ready for Broadway? What can you tell them? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just say I don't know. <laughs> well, take me back. When did you know that acting was something that, that interested you? Hmm. Well, I guess uh, I was, you know, I always plan on graduating early from, from high school um, without a really a clear plan of where I was going to do or where I was going to go or what I was going to do. So I guess by the end of high school, like I said, Lainey, you know, she always was really encouraging with me, vote because she's my voice teacher. Okay, but you already and had I, a voice teacher then. Mm-hmm. Why were you taking voice lessons? Where did this start oh, for okay. you? Okay, well, I, I was in choir. Um, I got into choir because my sister was in choir. <laughs> I wanted to be in choir with Anne. So, <laughs> that's, um, that's how it started for me. And then I just really started to get into musical theater because my voice teacher started introducing me to musical theater repertoire. And I started singing it and enjoying it and, um, and auditioned for the musicals at high school. And my sister was um, one of the lead roles in a musical and and I was in the chorus in high school and we worked at a community theater so it was in high school that I really started to love it. When do you remember having the first thought of wow I could do this for a career this could be my life? Well, Did that, you have that? Yeah I didn't that would have been the end of high school when um, a girl that had graduated um, came back and this is when I was in I was like about to graduate and I was kind of not sure what I, what I was going to do. And she came back. She had moved to New York, and she had come back, and she was at our high school, and I remember was sitting in the choir room like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And she came in and talked to me and was telling me how much she loved 
New York and, and, and how she feels like on fire about what she wants to do. And, and it really, I was like, you know, that's really what I love and that's what I'm passionate about. And so it really was that day that that girl came back and told me how excited she was about what she was doing. I realized that I was, I was just as excited and I was just as passionate <laughs> about it, so I was going to do it. And I did, and I, I didn't want to go too far away from home yet, so I went to Sam, so I could still drive home every weekend. And um, they had a great, they have a great department, so that's really where I got most of my training. You know, was at Sam. And I, um, I, the more I did it, the more I fell in love with it. And so. besides just having a singing voice. What else did you have to learn to do? What did you need to have to be ready? Because oftentimes you talk about this break coming out of basically nowhere and all of a sudden you're there, but you really are preparing for it with everything you do beforehand because if sure. that break had come and you weren't prepared, mm -hmm. you still wouldn't be on Broadway. Sure. So what's the rest of the stuff that goes into it? Hmm. Well, I think it's... Um, part of it, I think, for me was making the decision to really go for it with everything that I had and so all the training and classes and things that I took it wasn't just taking class and honing my skills or whatever but really dedicating myself to it and saying you know I need you know figuring out everything I needed to do to um to to do my best and and do it fully with all I had not just to take class and right. get better but to really dedicate myself to it. So for folks who think, well, to act, you get a script, you memorize it, you walk out on stage and you repeat it. Mm. How much more complicated is it than all so of that? I, I would say it's a lot more complicated <laughs> than that. Um, so I guess when I get a script, you know, you read it and you, um, you research it and, and you learn, I guess if it's a period piece, you, you know, learn all about the period and, and you learn about the character and, and you just, I think you have to live with the material to be able to start becoming the character and breathing as the character that you're portraying. Acting lessons, dancing lessons, yeah. all of that kind of all stuff? All that, yeah, absolutely, all that, yeah. Yeah. All those lessons. <laughs> <laughs> and then just really... You know, de you know, committing. So, you've <laughs> done all of this. You go out to New York. You meet this woman. You spend an evening mm -hmm. hanging out. You mm -hmm. come back. In those two years, uh -huh. what did you do? <clears throat> I finished college. Well, not exactly. <laughs> if I understand correctly, you graduated on stage, basically. Yeah. That's when your graduation mm -hmm. hit. Yep. I, um, I had my Broadway debut December, December 9th, and I graduated from college December 17th. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a little backward. When you know <laughs> you have a job on Broadway and then you're going back to school and taking your tests or whatever you do at the end, is there a sense of, I really couldn't care less about these? Or oh. did you still prepare for the school? Well, I didn't go back to school. Oh. I, um, I got the job and I, was, I had two days to go home, pack, and be back for rehearsal. So I got the job, and I, I came, I flew back into Houston, and then I, and I, you know, kind of had a night with my family here, and then I drove an hour and a half north to Huntsville to pack up my apartment, and then I drove back, and we flew out the next day, and I was in New York. Wow. Uh -huh. So then how did you finish college? Was it online? Online? Yeah. Well, most, you know, I only had like a couple weeks of class left before, so um, most of my teachers were like theater and dance and music teachers, and they were all like, oh, yeah, just let her go. <laughs> <laughs> and they graduated. I mean, they were all cool about it. Um, but I had a science class that I had to oh, finish. Oh, there's always that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. So <laughs> actually, my family was up for my opening, um, and so we all got together and huddled around my computer, and I printed out the study guide. I can't believe I'm saying this on TV. I, we printed out the study guide, and we were all using the study guide to take my, fin my last exam and my final. I had two tests. But I had not been in class, and I, I wasn't able to study. Right. So we had to do something, and I didn't have any books with me. So that's what we did. And, you know, me and my brother and sister and mom and dad just flipping through the study guide. And <laughs> does anyone have this question? Everybody searched through their stuff. Okay, that's uh, C, C. Okay, and then it's time, so you have to hurry. Well, I guess it's okay because you're probably not going to pursue a career in science. No. That's pretty it safe. Was, um, it was a weather class, so... 
Oh, well, then meteorologist. Meteorologist. You know, who knows? Maybe. Yes. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they tell you, you go in and you do this audition. You've been called after two years. Mm -hmm. Go in, you do your audition. Mm -hmm. How does that day play out for you? The, the day of the audition? Yeah. Um, well, my first audition, um, we, it, was, you know, in, it was backstage of the Lincoln Center. I mean, they have these rehearsal rooms downstairs. And I, I took my mom with me, and we just went in. And I went in and sang for Janet Foster, who was the casting director, and, um, and also, uh, well, anyway, <laughs> slipping my mind. Um, Ira, we uh, Ira Weitzman. <laughs> Anyway, so I sang and everything for them, and, and they gave me more material. So I, I had to stay kind of a few extra hours and learn the new material that they gave me that day. I was the first one to go, and then I went and learned the new material, then I came back after the rest of the girls had gone. And I sang um, Light in the Piazza, and I looked when I was done with the song, I looked over, and Chant Foster was crying, and I was like, I think that might be a good sign. <laughs> or a really or bad one. Or really bad. Or I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, it was a good day. And, and I could have gone home happy that day because I felt so good about that audition. So after that, my mom and I, I had not seen the show yet. So after that first audition, my mom and I went, to, um, went home and changed clothes and then came and saw the show for the first time. Did you know the show then? If you hadn't seen it, had no. you studied it or anything? Well, you know? I read the, the novella, and I, you know, I listened to the CD, and I, I learned the music and memorized the sides and and read the script. I mean, I knew what I I had the material, so yeah. I mean, I knew the show. I had just not actually seen it in production. So when you then saw it, went th what went through your mind at that moment? Oh, it was so surreal, and I guess it was just like, am I really? I, am I really here? Am I really, can I really do that, what they're doing up there? And I really, it's a mother-daughter show, and I was with my mom, and it was, you know, I cried a lot. And it, it, it's such a beautiful show that it was just, all my senses were just so, and I, you know, it was so emotional. So I, I had a million things go through my mind. When you were looking at did you feel like, I can do this role? Or were you sitting there thinking, oh, Lord, what have I gotten into? <laughs> I think it was a mix of the two. I think I really thought, I was like, I can do that. And then it was like, well, maybe not. I mean, that's pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of girls can do that. I mean, you know. How many were auditioning? Felt... Do you have any idea that first day? The day that I was there? Mm -hmm. I like t 10 or 12 girls came in. So they were pretty particular on who they were bringing in even for the auditions. It wasn't mm -hmm. massive cattle call. They pretty much knew they wanted mm -hmm. you. Yeah, I mean, well, they they auditioned quite. From what I understand, they auditioned a lot of girls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The callback. How did you hear about that? Okay. The callback was, I I had to have um, a session with Bart, the director, uh, like a coaching with him before the actual uh, callback, because all the girls that were called back had a session with Bart before they went into the room. So I did it that morning. <clears throat> the morning of my callback, and then I had to wait around, and I waited actually for all the other girls to go, and I, again, I went at the end of that day. They had scheduled me, so I would have a break. So they scheduled me at the end of the day, and I went in, and um, they worked with me, and, and you know, <sighs> then they asked me to leave the room and then come back in the room. I was like, okay, they really know how to torture a little girl <laughs> from Texas because this is daunting. So, because I was going in and out, and I would go in and I would work with Ted Sperling because he was there for my callback. I went in and worked with him for a while on music. Went back out of the room and came back in. I mean, it was a big process that last day, and then so I left. I finally, they were like, okay, we need you to come back at 5 and meet Vicky and Aaron. And I was like, okay, that sounds like a good sign. But I wasn't getting my Vicky hopes up. Vicky and Aaron. Vic Victoria Clark and Aaron Lazar, who play, was, plays Fabrizio, Claire's love interest, and Victoria Clark, who plays Claire's mother. And um, so I just went upstairs, and I was like, Mom, they want me to come back. My mom was waiting at a cafe, like, right there in the Lincoln Center. Um, and I was like, Mom... They want me to come back at five to meet Vicky and Vicky and Aaron. Of course, I was still calling her Victoria because it was so odd, odd to call her Vicky. Like, they want me to come back and meet Victoria Clark and Aaron Lazar, and she's like, 
what does that mean? So we called my dad at the office, and my sister was working at my dad's office at the time, and they put your sister a, who had been in theater, and you seem to yeah. surpassed at this point. Well, Not she's doing anything. something else. Okay. She was doing something else. and so she, so we, they put us on speakerphone, and everyone in the office was gathered around, and we could hear them all. Oh, that's so great! You know, a big cheering, and everyone's so excited. And um, you know, I was like, I guess they liked me, but I don't know. I'm supposed to come back again. And so then, as I was on the phone calling my brother, who was in LA, um, I get Janet Foster beeps in. And um, I was standing in front of the Vivian Beaumont Theater with the big light in the piazza sign. And I was on the phone with my brother, and Janet beeps in. I click over. She says, Katie, it's Janet Foster. And I was like, oh, hi. And she's like, well, that was quick, but we're ready to offer you a contract. And I. <laughs> I think I was just a little simple at that point. I was like, what does that mean? Does that mean you want me for sure? <laughs> it was very exciting because, I mean, right there in front of the theater, and I started, you know, I told my mom, and she started crying, and we called my family, and I called Lainey, who had introduced me to Kim right. in the first place, and it was very exciting. <laughs> How quick after that did your life change? Immediately. Really? Mm -hmm. At that moment, did you know it was going to? When you heard that call... Did you know that's um, it for small town girl? Even though no. Houston's not a small town, but you know. I didn't know it. In yeah. fact, I didn't. I don't know if it ever sunk in. But yeah, my life changed immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it like moving to New York? Because obviously you're very close with your family, yeah. and now you're in a sense being ripped away from them for a dream yeah. job. Yeah. <sighs> Living in New York or moving to New York? Oh, well, both. Well, moving to New York is, um, you know, that was. I had help, you know, I had, my boyfriend helped me move, and actually while I was in rehearsals, I, you know, he moved me into my apartment, and I came, I mean, not like I had, I had one suitcase, yeah. so not like it was, <laughs> but he hung my clothes up and put my, you know, shoes in a little row, and I came home and everything was done, so it was really stress-free actually moving in to New York, but then once I was there, I was like, it really hit home, I was like, I am here by myself, yeah. yeah. There had to be the point when the boyfriend went home, yeah. when people left. People and left. All of a sudden. Yeah, and then, you know, and the holidays were, you know, I spent Thanksgiving without my family for the first time. And um, and then they had they came up for Christmas, and we had Christmas in New York, and it was just different. And yeah. it was hard, you know, it's hard being away from your family, really, for the first time. I went, I went to Sam. I was at school an hour and a half away. And the first time in my life I'm, you know... All the way in New All York. All the way away, yeah. Okay. How do you keep it working with a boyfriend, though? If you've got a boyfriend back here Aww. and you're all that way in New York. Well, he's pretty sweet, so <laughs> we still get along really well. You know, T-Mobile. <laughs> Does that help you out? Free mobile to mobile calling. <laughs> yeah. So unlimited mobile to mobile minutes. Yeah, that helps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we talk on the phone a lot. Okay, the other side of all that. <laughs> now you come home to visit. And you're a Broadway star. Mm -hmm. Do people treat you differently here? Do kids you went to school with, people you know, fellow oh. actors? Treat me differently? Yeah. Well, this is the first time I've been home since I... So I've only been hanging out with my family. <laughs> no, they don't treat me differently. <laughs> so that's still the same. Yeah, it's the same. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's still, it's still me and... You know, still my friends from school. So the star the treatment same. in Broadway, on Broadway... The celebrities, the legends you've met, who do you, who stands out? Who have you met that just wows you? Oh, I haven't met, I haven't met too, too many people. I have to think about that. Um, oh, okay, I had to uh, clear out my dressing room because Elaine Stritch was going to be using it for like a little benefit that she was doing at Lincoln Center. Uh -huh. And that was pretty wild. And she came into my room and she said, oh, just don't worry, you know, don't move all this stuff. That's fine. I just need one little corner, just one corner. And I'm fine, sweetheart. I'm fine. I'm, and she was just so, you know, didn't want me to go out of my way. But I ended up, I was like, okay, you're a lane stretch. And I cleared the whole <laughs> room out. But <laughs> that was pretty Was crazy. she wearing a hat? No, but she was wearing her big sunglasses. Big sunglasses. <laughs> yeah. Well, then you knew she was a star. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. She was, you know, she was cool. She's Elaine Stritch. She's a big star. She's, I cleared my room out for her. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Yeah. Do you have any idea where you want to go next, what you want to do next? Do you want to do another Broadway show? Do you want to take a break and come home? What really serious career-wise do you want to do? Career-wise? Mm -hmm. I want to do another Broadway show. 
Yeah? Yeah. Got your sights set on any? Not at the moment. Yeah. Nothing in particular. Light in the Piazza is so much involved with the mother-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. What do you think you've learned about you and your mother from doing that role? My own mother? Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Somebody told me actors have to draw from their own life. That's where you've really oh, got to sure. find it. So. Sure. Well, um, well, okay, so Margaret, um, Mar Clara is able to teach Margaret a lot. Just, Clara's your character. Yes, Clara, Clara is my character and Margaret is my mother in the show. And um, because of her innocence and so it makes, I guess I, I learned that, you know, I'm, I, I have the ability to teach my own mom. I mean, <laughs> not that she needs, not that she's dumb or anything, but, <laughs> you know. Um, right. <clears throat> And that the relationship, the mother-daughter relationship, can run a lot deeper than just mother and daughter. And, um, how much I, I've learned how much a mother can sacrifice for her daughter and for for their children a little bit more than just because you really do you step outside of of your your situation and you're in this different one every night. And, um, you know, Margaret really, really lives for Clara, sacrifices everything for her. Yeah. So that, that hits home a little bit clearer. Than when you're actually doing a role, and you've done it so many times, you're doing it every night, eight times a week, whatever, mm -hmm. do you still hear what's going on, or does it become in some way, these are the lines I deliver? How do you keep it so there's something still coming in? Keep it fresh? Yeah. That's part of um, yeah, part of the job. Yeah. Um, because if you're not careful, I think that it can be that way. And one of the amazing things uh, about our show is that it's so it's so good that it's pretty easy. You know, you you just have to listen and be present, and and that's how good of a show it is. As, as long as you're present and you're listening, you know you. It, the show carries you quite a bit. Do you learn new things each time you hear it? Oh, yeah. It's fun. Um, you know, I, <laughs> once you're in it for a while, uh, and, and it's exciting when you learn something new and, and you discover something in a moment that you didn't discover before. Um, and Vicki was actually talking about this because she's been in the show for three years now, Victoria Clark. And um, she, <laughs> she was talking about how she still is discovering things and just... You know, in certain scenes, oh, well, that's exciting. She gets real excited, and you can tell that she's <laughs> propelled through the rest of the show. So, yeah, I mean, you're still discovering, and you're still digging deeper, and you're still wanting to get deeper in your relationships with those other person, and it just never stops. Yeah. <laughs> How has Claire changed, do you think, while you've had her, while you've been in possession of that character? Possession of She's gone through different phases. <laughs> um, I don't know. Some nights I... I She's very, ten, I mean, she's mentally 10 years old, um, partly because of the, her injury and partly because she's been so sheltered all her life. So um, some nights she'll be very 10. And I don't know why that comes out of my body, but you just go with it. And so, yeah, some nights when, when, when you're doing a certain thing, you discover things that way. You, you know, when Claire is really 10, you have to go with it. And you discover different things that, you know, doing it that way that you wouldn't normally discover so yeah. she's gone through different phases very 10 very adult very smart you know and and all those things you draw from and it's ever evolving i think now as we tape this the live from lincoln center is about to happen oh. nervous excited just another uh, show um I like to tell myself it's just another show, <laughs> um, but yeah, nervous. I have to say, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a bundle of nerves over it. We can't tell. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's scary, um, but it's comforting to know that you just do the show you do every night and every day, and you do it with the same people you always do it. Aaron and Vicki are going to be there, and Kim's going to be in the pit with all the orchestra that we're, we always have, you know. It's comf that part is comforting. Yeah.
But it's still scary to have know they there's going to be cameras. Have they asked you anything different? Have they said because of the cameras and all that? Anything, or is it just go and do it as you do? They've been very good about saying just don't think about the cameras. Just do what you want to. You know, do what do how you do the show. They've been very good about trying to ease. I think they know that how. When they made the announcement that we were doing a live from Lincoln Center, I didn't even know what that was. It was embarrassing. <laughs> but uh, I, I was sitting next to Felicity, who's in the show with me, and um, she, and they made this announcement, Bernie. Um, and uh, what they were, they were Andre and Bernie, or Lincoln Center, big producers, artistic directors, I think. <laughs> so they came in and made this big announcement. Everybody's like, oh, yes. I'm like, live from Lincoln Center. And I had to whisper it because I what is that? Felicity goes, oh, it, we're gonna, you're going to be on national television. And my stomach dropped to the floor. <laughs> I was so, I, so since that day when Felicity told me exactly what I was going to be doing, I've been nervous about it. Well, I'm going to tell you, you don't have to be nervous anymore. We're done with our interview. Okay, good. That easy. <laughs> Katie Clark, thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. <laughs>